Hi everyone, not too long ago, I made a video about cheap Chinese modules from AliExpress, and at the end of that video, I mentioned briefly how you can charge a car battery using a smartphone charger. In this video, we're going to put that idea into practice. Modern smartphone chargers are actually quite complex power supplies. Inside, in addition to a highly efficient power block, there are smart chips that provide fast charging protocols. These days, no one is surprised by chargers rated at 50, 60, 100 watts, or even more. As a rule, these chargers can provide an output voltage from 5 to 20 volts, and sometimes up to 28. That's convenient, since a single charger can be used to charge a laptop, a smartphone, and any other devices. For our idea, we'll need a charger like this. I'm going to use this 100 watt charger that supports the power delivery fast charging protocol. This thing can output up to 20 volts at up to 5 amps. By default, all chargers output a safe 5 volts, but we need more. The thing is, the charger communicates with the load and provides the voltage that the device needs. There are so-called power delivery triggers, or just triggers. It's a kind of trick device that makes the charger think it's connected to a load that's requesting a higher voltage. These triggers can be for a fixed voltage or universal, like this one. Here, by using a combination of switches, you can request 9, 12, 15, or 20 volts. And, as we can see, it works. We have 20 volts at the charger's output. Now, regarding the battery itself. For a classic lead-acid battery, let's say 60 amp hours, the nominal charging current is one-tenth of the battery's capacity, so that's 6 amps. Of course, for faster charging, you can use higher currents, but that's not really good for it. Although, in the car itself, the alternator charges the battery with currents much higher than a nominal value. Naturally, you can't just apply the previously obtained 20 volts directly to the battery. At best, the charger will go into protection mode. For proper battery charging, it's best to use the constant current, constant voltage method. That means the charging current shouldn't exceed 6 amps, regardless of the battery voltage or fluctuations in the mains voltage. As the battery charges, this current will decrease and, by the end of the process, will be close to zero, which is normal for any battery. And the voltage depends on a specific type of battery. For a regular car battery, the charging voltage is around 14.4 volts, while for a calcium-calcium battery, it will be higher. In other words, this is the final charging voltage, or the voltage to which the battery will be charged. Therefore, we need some kind of intermediate unit between the power source and the battery. And here is that unit in front of you. This is a step-down pulse current and voltage stabilizer based on the XL4016 chip. We supply 20 volts to the input of the stabilizer, and at the output, we set the required voltage and current. To start, after powering it on, make sure there is voltage at the output of the stabilizer. Next, by turning the specified resistor, we set 14.4 volts at the output. After that, you can seal the screw of this trimmer potentiometer. Then, switch the multimeter to ammeter mode and connect the output of the stabilizer through our ammeter. By turning the second resistor, we achieve a current of 6 amps. Afterwards, disconnect the ammeter and seal the screw of the trimmer potentiometer. What is the maximum charging current you can set if you specifically need a fast charge? First of all, pay attention to the capabilities of the stabilizer you are using. My version is rated for a maximum current of 8 amps. But if the current exceeds 4 amps, the module needs additional cooling in the form of a fan. And of course, the most important thing is the power supply. We operate based on power. Our setup is rated at 100 watts, with the stabilizer's output voltage set to 14.4 volts at a current of 6 amps. Therefore, the maximum output power of the stabilizer will be about 86.5 watts, plus the efficiency of the converter. With such a difference between input and output voltage, as well as the output current, the efficiency of this particular module will be around 90-92%. to 92%. As a result, taking losses into account, there's almost no margin left. So, a 100 watt adapter will be enough for a 6 amp charger, but it will be right at its limit, and the adapter will get very hot. I think that's all clear. Now, about the rest. The stabilizer module is equipped with a two-color LED indicator that shows the operating mode, constant current, or constant voltage. This is our charge indicator. If it lights up red, that means it's in constant current mode or charging is in progress. If it lights up green, that means it's in constant voltage mode or charging is complete. Wires. It's highly recommended to use wires with a cross-section of 1.2, 1.3 square millimeters or larger. In my case, I used flexible wires with silicone heat-resistant insulation, gauge 16AWG. 
Next, crimp the terminals and screw them onto the stabilizer. The charger is basically ready, but for now it doesn't have proper cooling or a case. Let's give it a try. I don't have a car battery on hand, or a car for that matter. So, we'll simulate a battery using an electronic load. We load the charger with a constant power of 85 watts, which simulates a pretty tough operating mode. After half an hour, I measure the temperature with a thermal imager. The power adapter is very hot, but that's normal for it. This isn't my first day using it, so I know what it's capable of. It can run at maximum power for a long time. As for the voltage regulator, it's hot too, really hot, actually. But overall, everything works. Next, we'll think about cooling. I decided to attach this 12-volt fan to the module. There's not much choice here. The fan is powered directly from the output terminals of the voltage regulator, and therefore from the battery. Of course, that's not ideal, because when the main power is off, the fan will draw energy from the battery. But that can be ignored, since the fan's power consumption is really negligible. As you've probably guessed, the fan will be running all the time. That's not exactly ideal either, but I don't want to complicate the design. We're almost done, but the charger is missing one important component. If you connect the battery with the wrong polarity, everything will burn out. So, we'll add the simplest reverse polarity protection. We take an electromagnetic relay with a 12-volt coil. In my case, it's a compact 20-amp relay. Connect it as shown. You can use any diodes. The relay is powered by the battery itself, and if the polarity is wrong, the diode won't open, the relay won't activate, and no power will go to the battery, the error LED will light up. If the polarity is correct, the relay will activate and the battery will start charging. Even though all the main checks have been done, it's still worth testing the charging with a real battery. I have this kind of lithium iron phosphate battery, for cells, 30 amp hours. Next, let's put the battery on charge. The indicator lit up, the charging has started. At the same time, we can monitor the charging current. At the end of the process, the charging current decreases and another indicator lights up. The unit has already switched to voltage stabilizer mode, and the charging can be considered complete. For added safety, it's also a good idea to add a fuse to the output of the finished device. By the way, our charger is universal, since both the current and voltage are adjustable. The latter can be adjusted from about 1, 2, or 1.5 volts, so it can be used to charge almost any type of battery, including lithium ones. Now, for all of this, we need to put together some kind of case. If you have a 3D printer, the choice is obvious. In about half an hour, I modeled something like this and printed it out of ABS plastic, since the internals will heat up and ABS is a relatively high temperature plastic. After some time, the case is ready. All that's left is to install the internals, and the charger is done. It works flawlessly. The indicator is visible through the cooling slots. It turned out to be a pretty versatile design. And you know what's the coolest part? You take this charger in a power bank that supports power delivery and can output 20 volts, and you can transfer energy from the power bank to the battery. Basically, you can charge a car battery from a power bank. I could end on that note, but I'm sure there will be questions in the comments about simpler options for a similar charger. Yes, you can make it much simpler. No trigger, no stabilizer needed. All you need, besides a power adapter, is this little thing. This is a module for building a power bank based on the IP2368 chip. It's a 100 watt module, but there are more powerful ones out there. It has a single type C port, which is bidirectional. The module can work with both classic lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate cells. The thing is, with this module you can manually set a number of parameters, such as the number of cells connected in series, the charge and discharge cutoff voltage, power, charging current, and much more. So it works both for charging the battery and for charging your gadgets, like a power bank. Another important point is that the module can both step down and step up the input voltage. And you don't have to supply 20 volts to the input. You can use as little as 9 or even 5 volts. Of course, in that case, the power decreases and the charging time increases. To have this device charge a car battery, you just need to switch it to lithium iron phosphate battery mode, set the end of charge voltage per cell to 3.6 volts, and specify the number of cells in series as 4S. In this case, the module will charge the battery up to 14.4 volts with a stable current, which, if desired, can reach almost 7 amps. So basically, everything is ready to go here. A boost and buck converter and a trigger all in one package, 
packed with a bunch of protections like overheating protection, short circuit protection, and much more. But again, there is no reverse polarity protection. This kind of module is much more efficient than the first option due to its highly efficient synchronous topology. It also has a convenient charge indicator and can even be effectively used to charge your various electronic gadgets, including larger devices like laptops, directly from a car battery. The module also supports a bunch of fast charging protocols, and if you're interested in this module, you can check out the full video review on my second channel. There, I showed its features and operating modes, fully tested it, and talked about the details. You'll find the link to the video in the description. That's it for this video. As always, all the necessary links are in the description. Don't forget to rate this video with a like or dislike, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. This way, you provide invaluable support to the channel. Well, that's all for today. As always, this was Kazianov K with you. See you next time. Bye.